really lost it. <laughs> Ladies and gents and pups, thank you for joining us this evening for the first official Tom Harper Photography live broadcast. Yeah. Who have we got in here? Oh, it has. It's just lagging. <laughs> <laughs> Technical issues. Um, so yeah, this week we hit uh, a thousand likes over at Tom Harper uh, Photography's Facebook page and I came up with an idea because I thought it would be quite fun uh, to do something exciting like a live broadcast. Uh, so if you stick with us this evening, we've got some news coming up, doggy news of the week. We have special guests Adele and Charlie of Dog Friendly who will be joining me on this very sofa and we'll be asking them all about the events they've got coming up later this month and uh, across the summer. Uh, and also we are running a competition, don't know if I just mentioned that we're gonna have a question details will be coming up later um, so first of all uh, just to lay give you all a heads up there are links in the description of this video uh, to enter the competition one of the things that you guys have to do uh, if I can ask James to queue up the uh, the, the subscribe scene that we've got here um, I need you guys to head over to www.tomharperphotography.co.uk and also dogfriendly.com and I need you to join our mailing lists. That's one of the things I need you guys to do this evening. Um, and also there'll be a question coming up later in the show. So you've got to stay tuned to find out how to win the amazing goodies that we've got. And we'll show you these goodies when I bring Adele on in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, the main reason we're doing this again, we just want to try this out tonight. Uh, I do apologize if anything goes wrong. Uh, this is the first time we've done it. We've set up a little studio in my front room. Uh, we've got James running the studio. Uh, we've got Gemma monitoring Facebook and the chat. And also we'll be doing a live Q&A. So if you've got any questions, make sure you put those in the comments because they will appear on screen later on. And we will be answering your questions. They don't have to be for me. They can be for me or Adele or James or little Charlie Big Ears. Yeah, go and follow Charlie Big Ears at, uh, at Charlie Big Ears on Instagram. He's also on Facebook, but follow him on Instagram. If you don't already follow Dog Friendly, head on over to their Instagram page at Dog Furendly. That's friendly, but with a U between the F and the R. Um, so, yes, uh, I think we'll start off. We've got a little bit of news for you, a little thing I put together, some weekly doggy news. And then after the news, we're going to bring in Adele and Charlie, and we're going to have a little chat about some of the events they've got coming up um, later this year. So we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Yorkshire-based animal bakery Hunter and Hound found themselves in a spot of bother this week after posting this photo of their chocolate-covered Valentine's doggy treats. 
eagle-eyed fans were quick to point out that the same image could be found on Pinterest, and that these particular sweet treats are actually Oreos meant for human consumption. The original image was in fact posted on the Florida-based blogging website Time Out with Mom. Hunter and Hound were however quick to pull the image from their website, replacing it with a rather less appealing photo of their actual doggy treats. We do love a good expectations versus reality scenario. If you live in London and aren't sure what to do this weekend, then why not head out to Hampstead Heath? All Dogs Matter is hosting a Valentine's Walk for you and your pups on Sunday and all money raised will go towards helping dogs in need. Entry is £5 a person and dogs go for free. Speaking of things to do this weekend, our good friends over at Dog Friendly are hosting a Hollywoof party to coincide with their one year anniversary. Further information can be found in their website and tickets are available from Eventbrite. They say never work with kids and animals. Poppy, <laughs> come here. Come here. Come here. Come and say hello to the audience. Here she is. And right, we're back. <laughs> you are on the sofa we have Adele and Hi, Charlie everyone. Big Ears of Dog Friendly. Hi. And we're gonna be asking them about what they're doing and what's going on with Dog Friendly at the moment while Poppy keeps barking in the background, so you'll have to just ignore her. <laughs> Um, so Adele, yes. What should we say tonight then? What do we want to talk about? What is dog friendly? Let's tell everyone oh. that if they don't know who you already are. Dog friendly. So if you're looking for somewhere to take your dog, um, so say for instance you want to go out for a nice meal, but you don't want to leave the dog behind, then dog friendly is where you go. We have like a website, like a directory filled with all the places like pubs, cafes, restaurants, attractions. Um, we run events like pub crawls, uh, themed parties, holidays, like it's a barking business. It, it is amazing. I've been to quite a few of the events with uh, Adele and, and James and Charlie and we've done everything from pub crawls to <coughs> Dogtoberfest, Christmas porties uh, in <laughs> Kongs in a nightclub in Cardiff and it was actually amazing. It's been, we've had some fantastic events, a really good social gathering. Um, and I would urge anyone, if you've got a dog, um, even if it's just one of the walks that these guys run because they are really fun to go on and it does, you know, it helps to... Uh, socialize people's dogs especially if you've got a young dog or a puppy um, it's really good to just get out and socialize with these different groups of people uh, so Adele what was the main reason that you actually started dog friendly um so Charlie who I've just had to drop because he wants to play um, he suffers with really bad separation anxiety um, and so I used to spend ages on Google like trying to find places I'd be on TripAdvisor then Google for like hours and I couldn't really find um, many places like a lot of people don't leave reviews and so it was really difficult to find places to take him um, so I think we went to where was it Cardiff's biggest weekend is that what it's called um, yeah pride pride event in Cardiff and it was a dog friendly festival and I was like oh my god it's dog friendly so we got very excited and we went just for a good time um, and then we saw that there wasn't many dogs there and we thought, well, why don't many dogs know about it? They're having Let's a proper play two. behind us. Ignore those two. Um, so yeah, so we um, sort of decided we was going to do this website. <laughs> oh God, that sounds so funny. They're not, they're not fighting, they are playing. They are it's, playing. It's fine. <laughs> Poppy's telling Charlie off, he's getting a bit frisky. <laughs> So yeah, it's basically the reason why, but it's mostly because Charlie suffers with can't be on his own. We'll sort this out in a second. Alone. So Charlie's got separation anxiety, which is the main reason Adele set this company up. Yeah. Um, obviously, I know quite a lot of dogs in the UK have got it. I've been yeah. fortunate enough that Poppy, she hasn't got it. She's actually like quite a frisky little bugger. <laughs> uh, we're going to get someone to sort these guys out in a second. Um, <laughs> I've, I've totally lost my train of thought. What I was, know, what was the next thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah. So uh, when you started Dog Friendly, I remember yeah. when you were at the beginning of your journey, I got in touch with you. Um, and I mean, I wasn't entirely sure exactly what it was. At the time, it was just, it was more of a database, wasn't yeah. it? Of um, just places, like you said, like uh, pubs and restaurants and cafes that you can go to. Mm -hmm. um, so over the past 
12 months um obviously you've grown quite a lot um and a lot of the events now are actually run by explorers uh, yeah. for dog friendly so can you tell us a little bit about how you've grown in those 12 months yeah. and, and what the explorers actually do so dog friendly started as a blog like i didn't expect it to get as crazy as it did it was just a few places um in cardiff and then eventually we had them across wales um and then we thought you know what there's a lot of people who are really passionate about this and so we decided we were going to look for explorers. Now, explorers are like our brand ambassadors and their role is to help other dog owners to find dog friendly places in their community, which is what we're all about. Um, and so, yeah, they run events in their community. They share different places. They're sort of like the, the lead in their area then, so to speak. Um, but since then, we've grown from zero explorers to 90. Um, 90 explorers 90 explorers and now we have them in different packs so there's a pack leader and they sort of you know help the other explorers to grow in confidence and to be the sort of um leader in their community so the more experienced ones are leading the the fresh recruits yeah. so i remember i was there the the first time we actually did a, an explorer i think it was the first time you did the an explorer one, yeah. initiation day um so obviously at the time it were just people from uh, across south wales but yeah. i know you've expanded now and these 90 explorers are actually all yeah, across the uk all across the world the so world. we have um like five in america we have one in japan one in south africa um, but the majority are based around the UK, so Scotland, England, and Wales. It's a big yeah. deal, guys. You need to get on board with this. Yeah, so it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, if you're really looking to, you know, help dog owners find new places to go, if you're interested in creating events, then yeah, come and join us and become an explorer. It's so much fun, and you know, we build quite good relationships with everyone. And as you said about our walks, even like when we do a free walk and we all meet together, it's just great laugh isn't it yeah it's amazing it is it's just a really good sense of community and everyone does come together and look out for each other you do make some really great friends and um since last year um when i finished my full-time job and i actually joined the dog friendly community uh, it really has helped me sort of gaining confidence and i don't know just helped me to boost my abilities really and to better understand myself and that's just through the community that dog yeah. friendly's created because it's like-minded individuals dog owners um, all coming together so it's been really good for me yeah. I am a dog owner but it has been really good for me and I know there's a few guys out there who I'm really close to it's been really helpful for those guys mm -hmm. as well um, so uh, with regards to the explorers and events and things what have we got I know we've got something exciting coming up this weekend yeah so this weekend we are doing a Hollywood themed party in Cardiff um, in the Mocha Lounge um, which quite a lot of people don't know is dog friendly. So we were really excited when we found out what it, that it was because it's a cocktail bar and it's quite glamorous. And so they're going to roll out the red carpet for our dogs. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're going to get some really nice snaps from Tom Hartwell Photography. I'll be, uh, <laughs> I'll be late because I'm going to a dog friendly walk at Garu Nant first um, with... Who's running it? Jamie and Becca. One of our uh, schools, yeah. Blue and Luna and Blue Pabies. I can't remember their tag, but yeah. they're basically sharp pace. So Jamie and Becca are running uh, some Fit for February walks in South Wales. There are other yeah. guys running them in different areas as well. Yeah, we have them um, in the Midlands, in Norfolk, um, in Glasgow, Edinburgh, um, and in Plymouth. So fit for February, all over the country, yeah. there's different explorers running different uh, month, uh, weekly walks through the month of February. Uh, yeah. So we went on the first one last week at, where did we go? Barry Sidens. Yeah. And that was amazing too. It, um, the snow wasn't coming down, but it had snowed, so it gave it this extra little magical twist. Yeah, um, The dogs had some good fun. And if you, if you check out my Facebook feed or my Instagram feed, there's a couple of photos on there of uh, one of our buddies, Piper, and her new little brother, Ramsey. So, um, cute. so yeah, we had a really good time on that. So yes, the Holly Wolf party uh, at Mocker Lounge. Mocker Lounge. Mocker Lounge on Mill Lane in Cardiff. I did mention it in the news as well. Uh, but if you want to take a look at tickets, if you want to join us this weekend, we'll all be there from 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Uh, go and visit Dog Friendly website. Uh, links should be on social media. Yeah. Uh, tickets are available through Eventbrite. How much is it for a ticket? Uh, it's eighteen pound, and you get um, a free buffet. Um, a free cocktail and the cocktails are usually worth like 10 pound themselves and they are amazing um and then you get like dog treats um some snaps uh, on the red carpet 
and so many other things. I'm not paying to go because I'm working, but I'm still getting that free cocktail. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, before we head into the next really special little thing we're going to announce, uh, we're going to watch a quick video to give you a little teaser about what Dog Friendly have got planned for May this year. So if we run that and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about it. So let me introduce you to the waggiest weekend. Video's not coming through on the live. Is it not? It's not coming through on the live. What happened? It is. Oh, sorry oh. guys. Technical problems again. Um, yeah, so if you did see that video, I'm not sure entirely what's going on. Did What happened? No? Did it not feed yeah. through? Oh no. Well, that was a trailer. We'll we'll put a link in the description later on. I'll put something in the comments. There was a trailer supposed to be playing for Waggiest Weekend. I'm not sure why it didn't work. Um, but let's just have a little chat about it. So Adele, just tell us exactly what this is going to be and when it is. Okay, Waggiest Weekend. Um, it's on the 10th to the 12th of May this year. Um, it's a brand new holiday weekend for dog owners. Um, we're really excited about it. There isn't anything like this out there at the moment that does something so tailored and specialized um, we're gonna have like um, there's boutique glamping and camping pictures to choose from um, but other than that you know we're gonna do guided walks we're gonna have daily and nightly entertainment um, dog show what are you laughing at <laughs> a dog show you know a quiz this like all sorts we've got a band come in for the evening um, as we all sit around the campfire um, we're just prepping the food menu now so we can share that soon but there's just it's going to be so much fun cool okay we'll come back to that in one second let's just crack on with this competition that we've got going on yeah. so hopefully any guys who are with us in the comments now have visited dog friendly and they've signed up for their mailing list and also signed up for tom harper photography.co.uk hopefully signed up for my mailing list we will be checking later um so <laughs> what have we got that you can actually win at the moment so let's take a look at these little prizes that Ooh. i'm gonna i'm gonna have to move these are not easy actually <laughs> i've had dogs just disappeared where'd they go i don't know charlie's probably gone to bed okay right Woo! Prizes, prizes, prizes. Right, we're starting with the small stuff. You could win this wonderful travel <laughs> bottle, specifically tailored with your dogs in mind. You fill this little bottle here with water, open it up, squeeze some out for your dog. That's one of them. Honestly, though, they are so <laughs> handy. Like, especially in the summer, you just pop it in your bag and, like, just put... Oh, it's just amazing. I love, I love my water bottle. Yeah, your dog needs to stay hydrated, so you really do need one of these. <laughs> Uh, we've also got a couple of bags of Boone's Doggy Treats. Uh, the explorers who do the walks and come out with us will probably know that we end up with Boone's quite a lot because they sponsor quite a lot of dog-friendly events. Uh, yeah, so what have we got? We've got Adult Senior Mix Original Chicken and Brown Rice. And we've got mm. some <laughs> Adult Senior's Free From Range Duck and Potato. Nice. Also, Tasty. so you can make your own little treats, we're giving you this gorgeous little, but it's not going to focus, it's not autofocus, but it is called Biscuits for Your Dog. Uh, so we're going to give you this lovely book, we're going to ship that off to you, so if you want to start baking your own doggy goodies, that one's for you. And now the special prizes, courtesy of Dog Friendly. Adele, would you like to model yes. this lovely piece? Yes, so, I'm already wearing wearing one just flash that little logo there 
um, our dog friendly t-shirts, um, you know, we had them when we launched and they went like crazy. So this is limited edition because there's only a few left. Um, and so yes, we have one available to give away today. Um, at the back it says, if I can't bring my dog, I'm not going. That's exactly what it's all about. That's what it's about. <laughs> right. These ones now, this might come as an actual surprise to some people. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Do you want to tell people about these? Yes. So these are from Party Pooch, um, or Porty Pooch. Uh, they're a brand new greeting card company, and they make cards for dogs and their owners, um, particularly. So we have a Valentine's Day card, which says, Humpy Valentine's Day, <laughs> for those dogs who just love to hump mine um and we also have a birthday card which says have a howling bark day i won't tell you how old you are in dog years so if you have a dog owner friend you know this card is perfect to give to them so how can guys actually buy these as well because they are on sale yes. we're giving you two for free so um just head over to party pooch porty pooch like as in a paw porty pooch dot com um, they're also on instagram they're on facebook and they're also stocked at cheddar paws bakery as well oh Stocking in the shops already. Stocking in the shops They'll already. Be in Clinton's so, yeah. cards before you know it. <laughs> Go and buy them now, only ten ninety nine each. Um, <laughs> ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine. <laughs> well, they won't be that expensive. No. no. But they are exclusive, and they are exclusive to Porty Pooch. Yeah. Um, so yes, if you again, if you want to enter this competition, all you need to do is go to tomharperphotography.co.uk and you can either wait for the pop-up or you can scroll down the main page and put your email address into that subscribe to mailing list box. Do the same thing with Dog Furendly at dogfurendly.com. Enter and subscribe to their mailing list. It should pop up on the website. There is also a question that we need you to answer. So you're gonna to have to keep watching. You're gonna to have to put this comment in the box and you have to keep watching to, to, so that we know you're the winner. You have to pick your name out later. And the question is pretty simple. What is my favorite kind of biscuit? Now you can enter as many times as you want. Just guess, because I know there's not that many of you watching. Um, so just enter what my favorite kind of biscuit could be. Uh, if someone gets it right, if a few of you get it right, we'll pick one of you at random towards the end of the video and you will win a lovely basket of goodies that we've just showed you. Pop that uh, biscuit down. Do you want to try the, um, the video again, James, to see if it runs? If it doesn't run, we'll jam us monitor in the feed, we'll find out, so we'll, we'll cut back to main cam. Ah, where's main cam? Oh shit, is this stopped? <laughs> Guys, technical issues. Technical issues. Alright, we'll start this up again. Keep them busy, Dal, keep them talking. Oh, am I, am I still here? Yeah. Oh, well, hi everybody. <laughs> I'm just about to share this on Dog right, Friendly's um, Facebook. <laughs> you caught me at quite an awkward time. Um, so yeah. What is Tom Harper's favourite biscuit? Like is it uh, a dog biscuit? It might be a bonio. Who knows? Uh, is it <laughs> a gravy bone? Uh, it's probably going to be a human again. biscuit. Should but be, you come up with the There you go, we're back. Are we back? So yeah, fingers crossed. We're back. We're off again. I think camera overheated. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, what was we doing? Right, we I think we figured out the technical problem with the video. Uh, we know you aren't getting audio, so we're going to try it one more time, and hopefully this time uh, it yes. plays. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So, James, yeah, hit it.
Hey guys, right, finally we actually got it working. Adele was ready. <laughs> I was so ready. Right, Adele I'm done was ready. social media in. Uh, right, we're actually going to do a little bit of Q&A now. I know we've got a couple of questions. Um, if you've got any more, just keep them coming in the comments because we have got someone taking them down and they're going to pass them on to us. Um, I, again, I know there's not that many of you watching, despite the high quality production that we're putting <laughs> on you. It's really disappointing, but it will be saved onto Facebook, so we're going to be sharing the hell out of it. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so what's our first question, Jem? Jem? <laughs> I don't want to read it, just tell me. It's fine, it's fine. Oh, it's on the screen. I can see it on the screen. So, oh. what's your favorite breed of dog to photograph? I think I've been asked this one before, actually. Have you? Um, yeah, because someone asks me, asked me, big dog or small dog? Mm. And it was really hard to decide because big dogs are really good for photographing outside, small dogs are really good, like, inside. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends what breed as well. Um, did you say what What was the thing? What breed is my favorite to photograph? Quite so specific. I know, it? it is really specific. So I would say one of my favorite breeds to photograph is definitely, and it's gonna sound for that, it's gonna be Chihuahuas. <laughs> um, I've had a few Chihuahuas in, and Chihuahuas, um, <clears throat> from a, a f f photographer point of view, Chihuahuas actually do give you some amazing, like different expressions. They're really, yeah. I don't know, there's something about them. They can really pull off like different looks and different faces and sassy. from like really, yeah, they're really sassy. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite photos is actually a chihuahua, uh, a guy called, <laughs> a guy called, a little doggy <laughs> chihuahua uh, called Frank. Um, oh. And it's going back in the back catalog a bit, but he's kind of got this like smug looking down his nose look on oh, his I've face. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah that the little is brown so chihuahua good. Frank, yeah. he was definitely one of my favorites. Um, but there's been, there's been quite a few dogs. I just look any dog. It doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter if they're trained or not. Obviously, you can get different looks if they're more trained. But if I had to pick one, I'm not saying they're my favourite dog ever to photograph. But Chihuahuas spring to mind just because they do give you so much character and yeah. and things like that. Uh, what's our next question? When are you coming to Norfolk? Why is it not queuing up? Oh, when are you coming to Norfolk? You need to photograph. Duchess. Duchess. Who's Duchess? Yeah, she's one of our explorers. Duchess the Explorer. What breed so is she? So lovely. Do you want to answer breed. this one? When are we going to Norfolk? A doodle? <laughs> a doodle? Are we a doodle? Can you let us know if we're right? We're not sure. Sorry. I think a doodle. A cavapoo? Labradoodle? Some sort of doodly do. Doodly do. Ooh. Oh, but bad. She Sorry. is so gorgeous. Um, yes, we need to go to Norfolk. Where is Norfolk? I'm rubbish it's at It's on the... Hang on. Never eat. It's like right on the east. <laughs> east. Naughty elephant squirt wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm on the so east coast. I'm so bad at geography, um, but it's proper. It's all the way over there. But I will go. Looking. I will go anywhere in the UK if someone wants to pay me to go there. Yeah, I mean, we are looking to go to different places, and we like we were talking about London the other yeah. day, so we are continually That's looking top secret. about. It's top secret. It's top secret, but we might be going to London soon. Maybe. <laughs> Duchess I is a Labradoodle. Sort of was, do. Yeah, you said doodle. That was one of my good guesses. Labradoodle. Hi, Duchess. I hope you're watching. She's so lovely. <laughs> What's her owner's name? Eliana. 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 Thanks, Eliana, for your question. Um, so, yeah, the answer is um, as soon as possible. We don't know yes. when. Um, we're gonna, we'll do a road show and we'll come up there and we'll come and see you. We if should you find, do a road show. If, That'd be yeah, amazing. If you find some exciting dog-friendly things for us to do, yeah. we could do a road show. Yes. But we need you to find us really exciting dog friendly things to do and then we'll come up and we'll come but and see you. How amazing would it be in the future for dog friendly to have his own camper van and we go from place to place? That's, I've always wanted one. I always wanted a so mobile. I want a mobile it. van studio. Yes. So if we both we'll just talk together. Right, we've already, me and Adele already, James will be surprised when me and Adele already talked about this in Cardiff the other day, <laughs> um, that we should sell our respective houses and all move into one yeah, big house. We should. Um, kind of like they do in um, in Silicon Valley, <laughs> uh, so that we can all run a business from the same place. Yeah, so cheering. James, James. <laughs> James and Gemma can go out and work for the for the yeah. mortgage, and me and Adele will just do the entrepreneur thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be the struggling artists <laughs> trying to make a difference in the world. All right, next question. What is the weirdest photo you've ever taken? Oh, what's the weirdest photo I've ever taken? Weirdest. Uh, it. I've been asked this before as well. It wasn't a dog. Um, <laughs> the weirdest photo I, I've ever taken uh, was I won't name any names. She's probably not watching. Uh, but the weirdest photo that I ever took was a family 
portrait session uh, back before I really was total professional. Um, and <laughs> there were there was a couple and a young daughter, probably three, something like that. Um, and they wanted to replicate a look whereby the dad, because he's quite big, you know, like Greg Davis? Yeah. Like th this guy was like this big. <laughs> he was like really tall, so he was a beast. So they wanted to replicate this photo where the Greg Davis guy, yeah. um, it wasn't Greg Davis. I do apologize <laughs> if you're watching, Greg. It wasn't you. I wish it was you, but it wasn't. Um, they wanted to replicate a photo they'd seen where Greg Davis was uh, holding the little kid up by their ankle. <laughs> so the kid was like upside down, like, <laughs> ah, like this. <laughs> Um, and I didn't like I didn't like the idea, but I did it. Um, that's probably the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest so one funny. I ever took. I need the, to see um, that picture. The, the other the other weirdest one that I ever took, which was really which I thought was really funny at the time, um, was it wasn't that funny, but it, it sort of sprung to mind like where there's a there's a there was a phrase I can't remember who said it, but have you ever seen a grown man running while taking a sh? <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't a photo of that, but I did photograph a cow taking a dump. <laughs> and I figured, well, you know, there's got to be some conversation in the world, like bullshit, um, <laughs> where somebody might actually need this as a stock photo. Well, yeah. So I took a picture of a cow taking a poop. That's Has anyone the ever weirdest... bought it? No one ever bought it, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was wrong. Uh, okay, next, <laughs> next question. Uh, do you have a preference between location and studio sessions? Uh, my favourite. Don't forget, we can ask Adele questions directly as well. Um, I know the, the Norfolk thing tied into it, but if there's anything for Adele, we can ask Adele questions. Yeah. Um, so my preference over studio and location, um, I always wanted to be more of a location, outdoorsy uh, kind of photographer. Um, studio sessions are nice in that they allow you to control so much more of it, um, the lighting and things. So uh, some of you guys may have come to my mini sessions uh, that I did in 2017 2018 um and even i think i surprised myself by how well some of those so sessions lovely. turned out yeah. um there was only one dog that i ever failed on one dog uh, i've had i had hundreds in those sessions uh, over the last two years um our busiest day was barking mad dog show we had 26 dogs that day and there was one dog on that day that wow. i couldn't do uh he was he was too scared it was a yorkshire terrier i think is that Oh. Sound about right, yeah. You're, I'm getting the nod from Jem. It was a Yorkshire Terrier, um, and they are um, of the of all the dogs I photographed in the mini studio. They're probably the probably one of the hardest, uh, and they've been the most scared. I'm not saying all of them, yeah. uh, but some of them have. Um, and there was a session I did before that down Lanravan Manor. Uh, where there was an older lady bought her two dogs in, and she wanted them both done together. Well, the one dog was sort of okay. Um, uh, and that's another one of my favourite photos as well, little Yorkshire Terriers. Uh, and he actually stood on his back paws and he looked directly, directly down the lens of the camera. <laughs> and it's just a really cute shot. And I've actually sold that a few times on uh, on, on on the stock websites. Um, but yeah, the other one was completely terrified, and um, I managed to get about two shots um, really tight to the edge because he just didn't want to stand on his own. And in the end, I actually got the the lady to put the the dog. Uh, dogs in her lap um so yeah oh uh quite back to the original question my favorites are definitely outdoors their yeah. freedom and actually watching the dogs run around and um i think it's more natural for them as well exactly yeah you were, dogs are meant to play and, yeah. and run around and just have a good time and uh cooping them up in a in a studio environment it's like it's you know it's not too bad and if, if you work with them well and the images will come out great but it's always nice to try and get out and capture some of the yeah. the some season gems. the actual environment outside so what, what do you think your, what's your preference with regards to photos of dogs what do you prefer out of my work i think outside i mm. think yeah location shots are more like you catch them in their own moments whereas sometimes when you're doing like a um studio shot it's more posed staged yeah more staged i like it when you can see them playing their tongues out their ears are flopping like you just get some of the best shots on location yeah we'll say we'll say outdoors is a favorite then that doesn't mean i won't do either yeah. We've got another question? Yeah, we will. Um, sorry, no. Will you be doing another collaboration walk for National Dog Day? Yes. Yes. We will. <laughs> um, things have been a bit mad. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Things have been a bit mad. Um, and if I want to sort that out, um, who asked that? Who asked Rina. that? Oh, Rena. Hi, Rena. Hope you're still watching. Um, we will. Um, 
I think I told a lot of the guys who came last year, I think I told them what actually happened because the original plan was in 2017, um, the very first one was kind of last minute decision. Um, and I set it up for a walk around Tradiga House Country Park. Um, this is before I knew you, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think about 20 or 30 people turned up. It was actually a really good turnout. I wasn't expecting it. So the plan was that day, it was just literally a walk around walk around the house and I was taking some photos and I actually blogged about it. So if you go to my website and go to the blog section, you can actually read a blog about um, the walk itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then I figured out it was really good. Um, and obviously National Dog Day is a big deal for dog companies. Um, so I wanted to do it again last year. So I organized the same thing for the same day and I put it out on social media and I didn't l officially launch the extra information that I actually came out with. Um, but bef before any of that even happened, um, the post got shared. Crazy it went, it went almost viral, it was crazy. <laughs> I think uh, my insights actually told me I had something like 80,000 it was insane. Impressions um, yeah. all across the UK. Um, and we had, I think, 700 and something, 750 responses mm -hmm. um, go in or interested or whatever. Um, and that was before I'd even said anything about the extra bit I was going to arrange. And that extra bit was going to be uh, a market, uh, a dog uh, dog supply. What, what, uh, a barket. Yeah, a barket. Yeah, so <laughs> dog clothes, dog treats and and things like that. And I was going to arrange that in conjunction with a local ma uh, market craft fair organizer uh, and put it in near the stables, I think, uh, at Tradiga Country House. Um, but when I contacted uh, National Trust, I think run it, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I contacted the National Trust who run the Tradiga Park site. And unfortunately uh, on that weekend, I think it is a bank holiday weekend, uh, the 26th, it fell on a bank holiday weekend. Um, and they already had something going on and they tried to make it really complicated, even though the, the market organizer was already on their list of partners, partnerships. Um, but they wouldn't let me do it basically. Um, and then I had to cancel the walk because then I got told that I couldn't even walk around the park. Yeah without permits and licenses and things like that, which really yeah. frustrated me. And uh, because if I hadn't put it on social media, um, <laughs> they wouldn't have known about it, but then no, nor would anyone else. Um, so yeah, I want to do it again this year. Um, and we and they did say to get in touch now at the start of this year, and I can do it with a different one of their partners, hopefully. So it's either going to be that, or we'll just do our own thing. We'll do something like we did down in where we switched it to Barry, yeah, um, ah. like we did last year, and hopefully it won't hammer it down. Yeah, because oh, of the, the rain came yeah, down. Yeah, of the seven hundred and something people, because because I switched locations, and I think because of the weather, I think we only had ten people, fifteen mm -hmm. people. It was great that you all turned out, and I loved it. I still had a fantastic time. Um, but the rain was that bad that we couldn't see a thing. No, we were <laughs> soaked to the bone within 10 minutes. One, we had... one of our explorers jumped in a puddle and like Dawn French, like it went up to like We here. had a vicar of Dibri it moment. Was... It was hilarious. She doesn't think so, but <laughs> everyone else so remembers funny. it and it was hilarious. <laughs> so we still had a really good time. And Rena, thank you for your question. And I can't wait to see you soon. Uh, and Dexter, Maisha, Saoirse, Poppy. Awesome. Let's get together. Let's do something. What else have we got? Can you capture photos throughout the year of events for dog friendly for a dog friendly calendar for 2017? When did you send this yeah. question in? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Who's asked this question? One of our explorers. Yeah. Jamie. Melissa. Oh. Melissa. Oh. Who's Melissa? Oh, Melissa. Do we know Melissa? Huh? That is an amazing idea. And if oh. I could have put a question in, I would have put the same one. I know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> that no, that would be a really good idea. Um we can't give away what's happening next Tuesday, but that could be one of them. What's We've happening got some next Tuesday? Don't know. Oh, yes! I, oh, I, I wouldn't know. We've got something really special happening next Tuesday, so it could be the start. It could be. Of that would be a really good one. images for a calendar. Yes. Um, I think yeah, that would be so could, good. Maybe we could run a competition for get our explorers involved. Get our explorers yes. involved to, uh, I love to that. get our explorer pups to model for us. Yes. We could do like I don't know. We could dress up someone as a fireman for the summer one, like a hose. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. It was a good idea. I thought it was a good idea. But yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely yes, look into that. that. Yeah, Mitzi really and Heidi, idea. we could do something for Oktoberfest, like for October. Yeah, a little yes. Halloween thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Halloween. That's an awesome idea. Love that. Yeah, we'll do Christmas in like September to get it out the way ready for the calendar. <laughs> Uh, no, I love it. Yes. That's really good. I yeah, love that's that an idea. excellent idea. Thanks for that. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Any tips for smartphone photographers? Oh. No, none. Just pay me. <laughs> <laughs> um, biggest tip, honestly. Um, <clears throat> despite being a photographer, I don't take that many photos on my smartphone. The only reason I ever really use it is for stories on Instagram mm. and things. I don't use it. Um, if you've got a half tidy phone or at least something where you can maybe have an app that allows you some sort of manual control um, because the biggest problem with animals is obviously they move around a lot so you need a, a faster shutter speed to freeze them otherwise your photos will come out blurry like when you take a photo of them in the dark um, but my one number one biggest tip for photographing any animals is you have to spend about 95 percent of your time lying flat on the ground yes um, eye level in all weather you have to get down to their level um it's not wrong to take a photo from above but you'll get a lot more nice looking photos if you get down to their level so um if you're asking about smartphones um it, imagine they're just a, they're just a tool they're a camera so just get down on the ground and take some photos of them from down there that's my number one tip for smartphone photographers yeah good for tip. any any pet photographer yeah but yeah that's a good question but yeah, try and uh, download a like a manual camera app of some yeah, kind. Yeah, there are there's quite a few. Like I said, I don't I don't know yeah. any, but I'm sure you could find some. Some photographers are like, oh, I, I want to use the P90 or the, the, the best cameras on the market. So yeah. yeah, get yeah. a Huawei P90 Huawei. or P20 Huawei. 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 Get one of them because the cameras then, are yeah. awesome. And then something like Lightroom then is great as well. Yeah, Lightroom Mobile. Yeah. Or, or Snapseed. Yeah. Snapseed's yeah. really good yeah. for like little edits to photos and things. Um, but yeah, phone cameras are getting um, really, actually really good. Um, they're producing uh, what they call, what are called, if you don't know, they're called raw images. So normally if you take a, a photo on your phone, it'll compress it into a JPEG image. So you lose a lot of data. Whereas raw images are something that professionals usually take on their big DSLRs, but cameras, yeah. uh, phones are actually starting to do the same thing. So they'll take raw images, which means you can make a lot more adjustments to them and then compress them into JPEG before you export them. So, but yeah, if you've got a good, if you've got a good um, phone these days, there's no reason why you can't take really good photos, but that is my number one tip is to get down low. Have many people been Pop in the comments down and what they think Tom's favourite biscuit is. We've I'm still them. really intrigued. Yeah, keep guessing. Keep guessing keep my favourite biscuit. Have we got any winners? Bring them up. Have we got anyone who's guessed the right answer? Yes, we have. Someone's already guessed the right answer. Keep guessing. Yeah. Keep guessing. Apologies if the camera goes off. They're again. all going to gonna be with like us going I think back. it might shut down every 30 minutes because of heat. Um, it's not a broadcast camera. We're doing our best. Um, <laughs> what's the next question? What camera do I use? I use the same one that you're watching us on right now. <laughs> I've got two Canon EOS 6Ds. Yeah. Um, that was my first upgrade ever uh, since my first camera, which was an EOS 400D. Uh, and I did love that camera. Um, I did, I wouldn't say I did work with it, but I, I got the most out of it that I could. Uh, and I upgraded to the 6D because it offered me full frame, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that I could um, get better quality out of my images there were certain different aspects i upgraded for the full frame there were a lot of other specs on there as well which i needed to upgrade for uh the sensor sensitivity if anyone knows anything about that it's called iso or iso uh, my old camera only went to 1600 uh i think this new one goes to 25,600 or something along or 250,000. but it gives you much better capability in low light um, and I've been able to use better lenses with this camera as well. The other reason was that this actually records video, the old one didn't. I basically outgrew my old camera and I would love to upgrade uh, to something like the 5D Mark IV, um, but I just can't afford it. I think I it also money. depends on what sort of lenses you're using as mm. well because you know I have a Canon and it's great but I only have the basic lens so I think the better lenses that you get will get you the better shot. Lenses are definitely 
more worth an investment <laughs> yeah. than a camera body. Lenses that's will awesome. last you way longer than a camera body. Yeah. Uh, saying that, I've had this camera for far too long. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, lenses are a much better investment. So if you want to get the most uh, out of it and you've got some money to spend, um, if you've got a what I'd say is a half decent camera already and you're thinking of upgrading, I'd consider looking at lenses if you haven't got any really good lenses already. Um, best lens that I own by far is the uh, Canon 70 to 200 2.8 non-stabilized version because that's like twice the price and I didn't need it but that lens is so good mm. it's so good it's so sharp and there's so much contrast straight out of camera it's absolutely stunning really good nice. best lens go in <laughs> next would you charge to come to Norfolk? <laughs> <laughs> Someone really wants right. you to go to Norfolk. Um, it's, it's a four-hour drive. Four it's a four-hour four drive. Hour drive. Uh, 250 okay, miles, 250 miles. Yes. There. Yes. Can okay, we combine so it with an so event? That's 500, that's a, that's 500 miles. Uh, so if you take off the 40 miles that I allow... Um, <laughs> Or just walk. You're left, I you're would walk 500 four, miles. Whatever 460 <laughs> times 0.45 is be, was, would be what I would charge in travel expenses. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, I don't want to put myself out of business, but it is always nice to rep other photographers. So there is a guy. Um, I'm not entirely sure where he is, but his name's Andy Bigger. Um, and he is one of my peers and role models. But he's, I think he's further up that way. <laughs> But he does some really good work. He used to work with Crufts, um, and he's photographed a lot of their shows. He's actually been on TV a few times as well. Um, so, yeah, check him out, Andy Bigger. Um, if you can wait until I come to Norfolk on a trip, I won't charge you travel expenses. Um, uh, so it'll be £85 for a shoot, which includes a mounted 10x8. Um, fingers crossed, you want more than that. <laughs> it's a long way to go. Um, but, yeah, that's my... My standard thing is 45 pence a mile. Uh, so you get 40 miles included. So it's a lot. <laughs> and he's not going to walk 500 miles. I'm not going to walk it, no. I'm not going to hike it. What's the next question? That's all right. What have we got here? What editing? What editing suite do you use? What editing suite do you use, Adele? <laughs> um, Photoshop. Yeah, I, I use, uh, for cataloging, uh, culling my images and doing my first load of edits, I use Lightroom. I'm still on Lightroom 5. I haven't upgraded to CC. I don't need to. Uh, I've got the old version of Lightroom and Photoshop on my PC. Um, and I will upgrade at some point, but at the moment I'm scared to... Uh, to upgrade because my hard drives run out of space. And if I install Lightroom and Photoshop CC on there, I'll have to delete the old ones. And if I delete them, I've lost them. So uh, that's why I haven't done it. Um, so yeah, I use Lightroom uh, for my, my cataloging and to trim my photo ed photos down. So say if I've taken like, done a wedding, I do weddings as well. So say if I do a wedding, I've taken like 2000 images. I'm not gonna use every one of those. So I, I flick through them in the library on, on Lightroom and I'll three star the ones I think I'm gonna use until I get them down to around 500. Uh, and then I'll go from there. And then I do all my basic colors in there and then anything extra like cleaning up, like cloning certain imperfections in images or branches out of people's faces and things uh, it's Photoshop <laughs> yeah. uh, and I have been messing with Photoshop a little bit more for colour work uh, and, and polishing some of my images to a more dreamy sort of look I used to go for a more natural look but I'm sort of starting to get a bit more creative with it uh, it's quite exciting but we'll yeah. see where it goes yeah. so yeah Lightroom Lightroom 5 and I think it's CS or is this CS? Creative Suite yeah CS yeah. 5 Photoshop 5 so Light old. Room. Lightroom is great though. Lightroom's like, even awesome. Even the mobile app, like, is so. Lightroom's amazing. There are loads of others. I won't go into them. There's ones like Capture One and all these. I think there's one called Aperture or something. But Lightroom is like the biggest Industry one. Industry standard, yeah. Yeah, unless you're shooting on a Phase One camera or a Hasselblad, but none of us <laughs> have got fifty grand to afford one of those. So we'll say Lightroom. <laughs> uh, okay, what's the next one? What photo are you most proud of? Oh God! I'm so glad all the questions are for you. I know. Why? 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 <laughs> what photo so am I most proud of? Heck. The thing is, if there's more than this, this means that someone's feeding me these <laughs> from the side. They're just making it really difficult. Who's asked this? Um, just trying to find out who Melissa. asked. Melissa. Yeah. Melissa. 
It's a really specific question. Which photo am I most <laughs> proud of? I love it. Actually, right, you can't, like, I am, like, this isn't a dog photo, but see this here? You can't see it all. But see this photo on the wall behind me? Um, <laughs> I took this when we went to Las Vegas in 2016. 2016. And uh, on the last, we rented a car. Um, we had a Dodge Challenger. And on the last day, uh, we decided to take it out to Red Rock Canyon, which I think is north or west of Las Vegas, the actual city. Um, and it was a really nice place. Um, if any of you know come calm forest drive or like sort of like a one-way circuit around a country park or something it was kind of like that but just open with red rocks and you know cactuses and those tumbleweeds and yeah. it was really like really western um but yeah we got uh, we came on the main road coming back and um i took a panoramic shot of the the actual red rocks as we were coming back down there so i'm really proud of that photo because i actually got it printed onto what they call it an, an art block and it cost me a fortune and if you see the whole thing it is really good yeah maybe i'll if i find it's the like, image i'll post it on um it's like do you know when you're looking for like a a desktop background and you think i need yeah. somewhere that's gonna give me a bit of wonderlust like it's like one of those yeah. You look at it and you think I it is pretty be there. deep blue skies yeah. rolling clouds red stones um, I'm just trying to think whether there's another one I'm particularly <laughs> proud of. What would be? Hmm. I don't know. Oh yeah, not no. There is. There's another <laughs> one. I'm not, I, there's another one that I, I sell on um, on Shutterstock. It's a photo of Little Legs. If you want to follow him, it's at Little Legs Lincoln. Uh, he's a sausage dog. And he's really, really cute. He's a double dapple, I think he is. <laughs> and he was one of the first dogs I ever photographed in my um, in my mini sessions in my pop up studio. And um, I put one of his photos on a stock website, and it is by far the best selling um, photo. I don't think I've ever shared it though, because it's not something that I consider like a really pleasing photo. It's just that he looks really different. He's got this really shocked, wide eyed face, and it's been on loads of Chinese websites and. Austrian water adverts and That's all sorts amazing. of things. It's crazy. It's cool to see it. Um, one of them was about South Korea banning dog meat. No way! Seriously, there was <laughs> another article to do with dogs Love and that. President Trump. It was on there. Uh, I think a vet's used it on Instagram. I don't know. It's all over the place. You can do reverse image searches on Google. So and it, it pops up everywhere. So it's kind of cool. But... Um, yeah, so that, that I'm not particularly proud of it, but that's probably my most successful image. I'm not particularly a successful proud. image that no one else has ever seen. Isn't that just the way it goes? <laughs> uh, anything for Adele? What have we got for? What have we got next now? Or Tom again? Yeah, let's see what the yeah. next question is. Will Tom be attending a dog friendly event 2019? Yes. Hell to the yeah! Hell yeah! So Waggiest the, weekend for sure. Yeah, um, we'll be doing something there. We've got to figure out all the deets, but I know I'm going to be. Um, photographing documenting what's going on mm -hmm. uh that's for sure uh this sunday uh, i'll be doing the nat Gar i keep forgetting which order it goes in garunant. Garunant. garunant i'll be doing the garunant walk and i'll also be at the hollywood party uh doing photos there in card oh okay camera's gone off again so we'll just reset this <laughs> uh, one sec but yeah i'll be doing the um Hollywood party on Sunday at Mocha Lounge on Mill Lane in Cardiff. Um, we'll just wait for James to get his camera up and rolling again. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing loads of different events. Um, I'm not sure what else uh, might be coming up, but we'll be doing loads together, won't we? Yeah, basically, any time I can steal Tom to do some pictures, yeah. he's coming with us. So Fade fade it in again, Jane, see if it comes up. There you go. Yeah, so basically, whenever I get the chance to steal him, he'll be coming everywhere. What was that? Any of the explorers want your help to give you a shot? Yeah, that's the other thing as well. If any explorers are doing something um, and they want help, if I can do it, I will try and do it. Yeah. If you have budget, that would be even better. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, definitely. So yeah, whenever we can steal him to do pictures, he's our number one. Come it's been really good promo for me because we're springing up everywhere. Um, and officially, according to world records and things like that, I am actually the best photographer in South Wales. So. <laughs> yes. Dog photographer, best dog photographer in South Wales. 
actually Wales, UK maybe, I, I don't know. But it's crazy the amount of times I've tagged you in things and I'm just like, even just for just like a photo credit, like your exposure is getting so much bigger. Yeah. Then they're, they're everywhere now. I've yeah. got a nice catalogue. Yes! <laughs> I've got a nice catalogue of images. Oh, one of my, oh, there's another proud moment just before we do the next question. Another proud moment was um, photos I put up recently of the Wonder Collies. And that was kind of just cool because they ended up, if anybody watched uh, Britain's Top 100 Dogs, uh, the Wonder Collies were actually on there in the number seven spot. They actually did a, a segment with Sean, their trainer, and I photographed them. So that was kind of cool. That was just like, like a that. nice little moment. Yeah. That I worked with some some famous dogs. <laughs> famous. I've I've met a lot of Insta famous dogs. I actually took a selfie with Charlie, didn't I? The first time I met him. Like Charlie yeah. Big Ears. At Charlie Big Ears, Insta famous. Uh, well, we were on BBC One. Well, there Wales. you go. Yeah, they were. Yeah, Adele, <laughs> Adele, James, and Charlie uh, actually had their wedding films. So they've been on TV too. I I just hang around with a lot of famous people. <laughs> famous. Famous. We're not like Big Brother famous or anything, but you know. No, just BBC Wales famous. <laughs> yeah, BBC Wales. Right, what else have we got on there? Uh, J- oh, there's the tags coming across the screen. So, um, for Adele, um, is there oh. any events you regret doing? Ooh. Is there any events I regret doing? No. Brutal. Because from every event, you learn something new. Um, so, like, it's crazy. We launched in January last year and our first event was a pub quiz and I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't even think anyone was going to turn up, but it was, the pub was packed. People were even doing quizzes on the floor and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, we need to make sure that from now on we take it our events to make sure that we're not over capacity. Um, and then one of our next events was an Easter egg hunt and we had eggs hidden around, but everybody went to the same area at the same time. This is one of Garen Ant. Yeah, everyone went to the same egg at the same time, so there wasn't enough eggs for the people behind. Um, but, you know, that's something that you learn from. So the next Easter egg hunt we're doing, we've learned from it, and it's going to be bigger and better. But, you know, I don't regret any of them, because if I hadn't had the chance to make those mistakes, I would never learn for the next one. So every event is important. Yeah, it's like it's how you move on. Yeah. From it. I wouldn't say they're particularly huge disasters having so many people yeah, turn up that you yeah. can't handle it. But yeah, definitely you definitely learn from from doing things. We did the same with the with the mini sessions, you know, the following year we we changed things. But yeah, it's good. You just that you, tweak, yeah. So nothing that you regret but things that you've learnt from. James, any No Studio no, Manager no. shakes head. No, not at all. Don't no. regret any of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all so much fun as well. Like it's mostly about being part of that community and all being together and you know you get to meet so many people even if it is a rubbish event you know you've met a lot of cool dog owners and just getting the chance to meet them and learn about their dog and what they enjoy doing it's just the best thing ever and every time we've done an event we're on such a high just after meeting all those people and knowing that you know we all got together and we all learned something new yeah yeah no definitely yeah i totally agree it's been great anything else what else we got no more questions. No more questions. Well, we've, we've actually been on for like an hour, so I think we can um, we can wrap up around here. There we is can... one question. Oh, okay. What is Tom's favourite biscuit? Yeah, we were going to say we're going <laughs> to wrap. We'll do the we'll do the uh, the winner of the the competition, um, and then we'll we'll wrap it up for the wrap end. It up. Um, so. To win all this, to, oh, I tell you what, I didn't mention. <coughs> this is another extra special thing. Maybe if I don't mention it, I don't have to give it to you. But <laughs> let's try this. Right, see this. Maybe if we do this, a separate one. What's Adele's favourite biscuit? What's Adele's favourite biscuit? If you can answer that, you can have one of these. Yes. <laughs> I've kind of got to do it now. You left it too loud what to is show my it. There's just biscuit? nothing. There's nothing here. <laughs> no, we'll we'll throw in uh, a personalised doggy mug as well uh, with a an image of your choice. Hopefully it's a nice professional looking one like this one of Sid here, which I still need to post off. Uh, Jenny, if you're watching, I do apologize. Uh, I meant to send it before. <laughs> it's Christ- right by here. I meant to send it before <laughs> Christmas. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit late, but I will send it out to you. I just need to get to the post office. So yeah, personalized doggy mug, some doggy treats. Pie pooch cards, dog friend tea. Little water bottle and how to bake treats for your dog. What so, a prize, though. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad for tuning in and just guessing, you know, I signing up to... I especially want these for myself. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. But you can't, you can't lose on this show. We'll have to do you one can. of these every, every month. Um, do, we, do we have some winners? 
Oh, been given a piece of paper. What am I? What am I supposed to do now? Right. You've got how many? One, two. Oh, okay. Sorry, it is. Oh, only one person got it right. No oh, way. Oh, only one person. Oh, see, my. I think my brother. I think my brother's. Yeah, my brother's been watching, and he said hobnob, and that that was my second choice. But we've only got one person who's got this right, and. <laughs> The winner, I hope you're still watching, um, send us a message. Yeah. Send me a message straight after this feed ends um, and we'll get some details off you and we'll we'll ship this out to you. Uh, but the person who has won, da 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 da, da is Claire. Stevenson. With no E, Claire Stevenson. Hooray! C L A I R. Claire Stevenson. Well done, Claire. You have won this lovely. Um, You've won all Set the things. Of goodies. I see James is trying to queue up something. Oh no! Oh. We've just had the. Fl <laughs> we've just been flashed. We've we've won all these. Clear. Woo! Well done. Congratulations. Uh, send us a message uh, on Tom Harper Photography Facebook page, and we'll yes. get it wrapped up and sent back to you or delivered. It depends how far away you live. I'll come and drop them off personally, and I'll shake your hand. You know, it's always nice to meet someone famous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One, oh, I got one final. Oh. We got one final question. James, don't worry about queuing it. We'll be, we'll be From good. Melissa, how much are your mugs? How much are my <laughs> mugs? How much are the mugs? Love that. The mugs, in, <laughs> the mugs, including postage, are uh, how much should we say? Because they were eight, but I don't know if that was including postage. How much are they to post? A couple of quid. <laughs> eight. We we'll have to say eight quid. You can have one for eight pounds. Um, I'll have to put some pictures of them up for you. If you go to, are, they, are there any on your Instagram? Some of the old ones, not the Christmas ones. You jolly folly. Why, where are they gone? I, what's this? <laughs> I got no answer, I'm just getting a shaking head. No, don't speak to me. Um, I'll figure something out. If you're interested and you want to see some photos, um, send me a message and, who is it from, Melissa? Yeah. Uh, yeah, send us a message and we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll say eight quid for you. They might slowly go up to ten. <laughs> slowly. Because they, they cost they cost money to buy. Um, I do make them. I make them in house, but yeah, gotta make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's as easy as it looks. I am honest. I'm very transparent. I got a mortgage to pay. Um, so yeah, Claire Stevenson, well done. We'll send everything to you. Yes. So, uh, we've hit an hour, I think. I didn't actually think we were going to make it to this yeah. long uh, when we started this evening. But thank you very much, Adele, for coming in. That's all right. Thank uh, you for inviting me. No problem. You're very welcome. And thank Charlie, wherever he is. He was supposed to stay here with He's us. He's so but ignorant We've got sometimes. Charlie, I think, is sleeping upstairs. Poppy is sleeping on the sofa next to um, our question master. Um, <laughs> And thank you to everyone who asked questions. Yeah, as thanks well, to everyone who asked the questions and joined in this evening because that was freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've had an awesome time. Thank you very much for joining us. We should and definitely do this more often. We will do this uh, hopefully in a month's time. So if you have uh, a doggy business and you want us to give you a shout out, um, or if you want to be on the show, yeah, that would be really cool. Get different people in. Um, give us a shout, get in touch with us, and we'll invite you down here for our next live show. Um, whoop, whoop. And yeah, hopefully we'll uh, figure out the camera solution. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if we're going to figure that out, but we'll try our best. But uh, yes, thank you very much for joining <laughs> us, everyone. What was that? <laughs> yeah, we'll cool it down. Um, yeah, thanks very much for joining us, everyone. It's been awesome having you as part of our audience this evening. Yes. And we shall see you next time. Bye see bye. You soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Woo! 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 Woo!